This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, a slim front pocket wallet available in carbon fiber and titanium. With more than 250,000 sold, a lifetime guarantee and free shipping, get 10% off with the code GOLDFISH at RidgeWallet.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, it's Guilds Week here in Instant Deck Tech land, and today is Selesnia Day, and we have a sweet Selesnia Tokens deck to look at. This one comes from Todd Stevens, who I believe played it on his stream, and it looks pretty sweet. So a quick reminder before we break down Celesnia tokens for Guilds of Ravnica Standard. If you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made to videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Celesnia tokens can be broken down in a pretty easy way. We have basically three primary groups of cards, which are token producers. Then we have this weird mix category, which are token producers slash token payoffs and then we have token payoffs like the reason we are making all these tokens in our deck so first off our token producers when it comes to just making tokens we have a lot of the best options in the standard format we start off on turn one with legions landing just gives us a one one life linking vampire however our deck makes a lot of creatures and goes really wide so as early as turn three we can be flipping it around ramping by getting another land and then having a donto which can make a token every single single turn in the late game if we have nothing else going on. And then Sapperling Migration is fine on turn two for some of our explosive draws, just putting two bodies on the battlefield. And then it's a little more relevant in the late game. If we get to the late game, we're in top deck mode. We happen to peel it. We can make four tokens instead of two with the kicker. So this starts us off on the early turns of the game. And then we have a Mara Soul of Accord in History of Benalia as kind of our mid game token producer. So Amir is a little bit strange. You get a two, two, for two, which is fine, but whenever it becomes tapped, you make a 1-1 one, one soldier token with lifelink. So in this deck, we can either play it on turn two, try to start attacking, making tokens, or we can use the Convoke mechanic to tap Amara without attacking, and one of the things about Amara is, even though it's a legend, it's kind of okay to play four copies because Amara's gonna die a lot. It dies to Shock and Lightning Strike and Wizard's Lightning and basically any removal spell that you can name in the standard format, so always having an extra copy isn't the worst situation because it can generate a lot of tokens and a lot of value if it stays on the battlefield. And then we have History of Manalia, which is probably the most powerful powerful token producer in all of standard. Comes down, makes a 2-2. Two -two. Next turn, makes a 2-2. Two -two. So you're getting two 2-2s two -two for three mana. And they have Vigilance, which is nice. And then on the third turn, you get that lore counter. You pump your knights, which the tokens are. Get in for that big attack and smash your opponent. So nicely on curve with the rest of our deck, where we can play Legion's Landing on turn one. Turn two, we have Sapling Migration or Amara. Turn three, History of Manalia. And then we have kind of that mixed group of token payoff slash token producer. So March of the Multitude is maybe the best card in this entire deck. It does cost a lot of mana. You gotta have three to get it going and then X, but you get X 1-1 one, one white soldiers with lifelink where X is the mana we paid. So if we can cast this for like eight mana, we can get five tokens at instant speed, preferably on the end of our opponent's turn, which is already pretty good. The way that this is a token payoff though is it has convoke. So not only can we spend all of our mana to make tokens, but we can tap each of our tokens that are already on the battlefield to make another token. So in some sense, on an empty board, this is like a white sun zenith where you just make a bunch of tokens. But if we have a big board of tokens, it essentially doubles all the untapped creatures we have on the battlefield by making another token because we can tap them to the convoke mechanic. So a very powerful finisher that we're looking to cast on our opponent's end step, untap, swing, smash our opponent out of the game, game a huge chunk of life, and hopefully just close out the game right then. As far as Trostani, it's only a one of, but it is another one of our token producer slash payoff. So on one hand, it pumps all of our tokens, which is nice. It pumps all of our creatures, actually giving all of our other creatures plus one plus one. So suddenly all of our one one tokens from March of the Multitude and whatnot are not dying to Goblin Chain Whirler. They're hitting for two points of damage. Also, it makes two soldiers with lifelink when it enters the battlefield. So it's very similar to like Regal Caracal, one of those cards, the army in the can on the top end of our curve. 
So those are kind of the mixed cards. And then we have just our straight up token payoffs. And number one is Venerated Loxodon, which allows our deck to have some really explosive starts. Imagine a start where we go turn one, Legion's Landing, turn two, Sapling Migration, turn three, we can Venerated Loxodon, tapping our three tokens, make our tokens into two twos, and get a four four. We are passing turn three with 10 power and toughness on the battlefield, which is an absurdly fast start for the standard format. And that's not even the best start. If we go turn one Legion's Landing, turn two Sapperling Migration, on turn three, we can Sapperling Migration, use all creatures to pay for Venerated Loxodon's cost with Convoke, make all of our tokens, five of them into two twos, and get the Loxodon. That's 14 power and toughness on turn three. So Venerated Loxodon just gives us absurd nut draws, where suddenly we are just crushing our opponent really quickly, saying, do you have Settle the Wreckage on turn four? If not, you are dead, which makes it incredibly powerful in our deck. Pride of Conquerors, we're usually going to have City's Blessing by the time we are casting this. And then we're giving all of our tokens plus two plus two at instant speed for just two mana, which is insane. And then Flower Flourish is kind of interesting. So the Flower Half gets us a Forester of Plains, which is right on theme with our deck. And it allows us to cut back on the number of lands in our deck. Even though we have five mana plays and we have things like March of the Multitudes that want lots of mana, we only have 22 lands in our deck because we can count Flower as a land. So we're kind of have 26 lands. The thing is, Flower is a land but it's okay when we flood out too because if we flood out we can cast the flourish half and have a really expensive version of pride of conquerors so the flexibility of the card being a land in the early game letting us trim back on our actual lands and being a token payoff finisher in the late game when it overruns our team makes flower flourish really great in our deck otherwise district guide looks a little weird doesn't produce tokens but it gets us from three mana to five mana for things like tristani it also kind of adds two mana with march of the multitudes because it gets us a land that we can use to pay for march of the multitudes and puts a creature on the battlefield which we can tap for convoke with march of the multitudes so even though it doesn't obviously synergize with the token deck it does work really well with some of our best cards conclave tribunal gives us some removal an oblivion ring that can be free in some cases if we can invoke it out with all of our tokens mana base dual lands basic lands pretty straightforward in the sideboard for the control matchups we get vivian reed as a repeatable source of card advantage shalai to protect our team from things like settle the wreckage targeted removal dawn of hope to make tokens and draw slots of cards slips in under counters on turn two knight of autumn is just kind of a catch-all it's good against artifacts and enchantments it's good against the red decks where it gains us a bunch of life definitely and citywide bus settle the wreckage give us a bunch of removal that doesn't really hurt our deck we actually have four rats in our sideboard that don't really kill hardly any of our creatures or any of our creatures but might kill all of our opponent's creatures if they're playing like mono green or other decks with big creatures and that is celestia tokens for standard and that's been our instant deck deck for today so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.